If you're currently using electronic drums with GarageBand and we're considering getting an audio interface, this video is for you. I'll point out the key differences, the advantages of using an audio interface, and a key consideration. Audio interfaces come in several different uh, shapes and sizes and are made by several different companies. Uh, for this video I'll be using two Focusrite Scarlett audio interfaces. First one here is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i4 and the second one is the Focus Scarlett uh, 18i20. I will also be using the Alesis Nitro Mesh Kit and this is the drum module. And this is the back of the drum module with the relevant ports. And a MacBook Pro which hosts GarageBand. Let's start out by talking about some similarities between both using the electronic drum kit going straight into the laptop where GarageBand is or using the an audio interface going straight into the laptop where GarageBand is. Uh, the first similarity is they both connect via USB cable so um, as you can see here the bottom, US, the bottom audio interface goes right into the MacBook Pro like this here and this USB cable can be used uh, for this audio interface here and you could also if you were going to go with your electronic drums right into the MacBook Pro you can connect your electronic drum module with the USB cable uh, right here Another thing that would be similar, regardless of whether you're using an audio interface or just the drum module into Logic Pro, would be that creating a track would be done exactly the same way. Now we'll talk about some differences between using electronic drums with or without an audio interface. The first one is uh, the audio preferences configuration. What this does is it allows GarageBand to recognize which device you're using, whether it's the electronic drum module or the audio interface. So what you need to do is go into the audio preferences like this and set your input and output devices. The first scenario we'll go over is with electronic drums, which is really easy and straightforward. You can leave both your input and output settings to system. However, when you're using your electronic drums with an audio interface, you'll have to set both your input and output options to recognize the audio interface. I'll set them so it will recognize the audio interface as an input and the audio interface as an output as I will be using the output jacks on the audio interface to output sound. Next, we're going to talk about the advantages of using an audio interface with electronic drums and GarageBand. And the first one is a biggie. It's, it has to do with outputting sound. When you're connecting your drum module directly into a device that hosts um, GarageBand, as you can see here, there's not a lot of options for outputting a robust sound to a speaker or anything. 
So you're pretty much limited to the output here, which would be to a smaller speaker, or you could use Bluetooth, which I have found to have uh, latency when I do that. So I tend to stay away from that, and that's one of the biggest reasons why I use an audio interface. And if you look in the back of the audio interfaces here, you can see that this audio interface is a smaller one, but it has two output sources here for quarter inch cables, which serves great for like two monitor speakers. And a more robust uh, audio interface like this here has um, 10 output ports, so you could potentially have up to 10 output sources for speakers and monitors if you wanted to for that particular audio, in audio interface. Another huge advantage of the audio interface comes to uh, jamming and recording purposes. When you're using an audio interface and plugging it into your uh, MacBook or any device which hosts GarageBand, it opens up the possibility to jam and record with other musicians. So this uh, audio interface here has two input cables, which means it allows you can either put um, an instrument or a microphone in there. And this audio interface has 10 inputs, only two are visible on the front. There's an additional eight on the back here. So, you know, you could jam with uh, eight other musicians here, and you could also easily record with all the other musicians uh, with GarageBand and make some uh, sophisticated and fantastic recordings. Another advantage of using audio interfaces is the actual interface of the audio interface. Um, it, it allows you to easily adjust the volume of the output uh, to your, to your uh, output source, whether it's speakers or headphones or whatever. And uh, it also allows you both of these to plug headphones into the audio interface. This one here has one jack for headphones and this one here has two jacks for headphones. And finally, a couple final points on how strong the audio interface is. Um, if you're using your electronic drums with GarageBand with just a uh, laptop or another device, you're going to have a hard time playing out live. Um, just going to have a hard time generating enough sound to do that. However, with the audio interface, as I had mentioned, you have all these output jacks. So not only can you output powerful sound, but you can output them to a variety of sources, whether it be monitor speakers for the band or output speakers or however you want to handle that. Another great thing is um, when you, you can connect your drum module to the audio interface with a MIDI cable like this and this gives you just a ton of extra length to set up your drums uh, far away from your device and um, it just provides a, another great set of options for you. Now let's talk about some disadvantages of using an audio interface with your electronic drums in GarageBand. You'll obviously have to purchase the audio interface to use it. It'll be an extra piece of hardware that you'll have to cart around with you if you're playing out live. It's going to require more cords and you'll also need to purchase some speakers and monitors if you want to output sound. And one final consideration you want to think about is the device that you're actually using GarageBand on. You're going to want to use a fairly powerful device um, because recording and processing and um, uh, just playing the music live takes a fairly decent amount of processing power on your device. So I'm, I'm for example, I'm using a five-year-old uh, MacBook Pro here and it, it works like a charm. It does everything I need it to do, but uh, that is definitely one consideration you want to think about. Thanks so much for watching this video and supporting this channel. If there's any topics you'd like to see me cover in the future, please leave them in the comments section below.